All right, so let's do a little discussion about Logix Pro. Um, first thing you want to do in your settings is disable Merlin. If it's enabled, you'll see a little green or a little blue check next to it. I've got my enable Merlin not checked. I do have my enable sound checked. Sound is good. Now, inside Logix Pro, you're going to see a couple different sections. On the left, you'll see the simulation area. This is where you get graphics that you can animate if you program it properly. We're not going to mess too much with that today, but in later classes, we are going to mess with animation. For now, I'm going to grab that center rail and slide it to be smaller and basically out of the way. The main section here is in front of you. It's your ladder logic section. That's all this white space in the middle. The top menu also gives you some features that are just like a programming language, and we're going to learn about all of them eventually. But the main thing I want to teach you about is this little box right here that says offline, right? Programming that we do in the simulator, as well as in real world programming, you generally do your programming offline. Offline means you're not hooked up to the PLC. Then we generally have to download that program. That means send it, send it to the PLC. And then we have to get that PLC to start running that program. And we do that exactly the same here in the simulation tool as you would do in, um, in the real world. So um, let's start talking about very, very basic program. Now this ladder, you can see on the left, there's like a beginning of a rail. On the right, you can see the end, uh, also a rail. That's those side rails that I was talking about in an earlier discussion. The rung has no logic in it. There's no elements in there. But right above this area, white area, you see a gray area where it shows you different little icons for elements you can add to your ladder logic. And the first thing we're going to do is add a switch. So if I click on bit, I can see I've got three or well, two different kinds of bits available. One is a normally open bit, or the terminology used by Alan Bradley is examine if close. It's normally open. That means do something when it closes. And the second bit next to it is examine if open. It's normally closed but do something if it opens. That language, that terminology is pretty unique to Alan Bradley. Examine if open, examine if closed. And you're gonna see that repeated in a couple of different places. But what I wanna do is I wanna set up a switch. So when I close that switch, it causes a light to go on. So I'm gonna grab my normally open or examine if closed bit and just drag it down into my ladder. Now, the ladder gives me a little bit, as I'm dragging, I'm holding my left button here, the ladder gives me a little box where I can drag things to. When I'm hovering over it properly, it'll turn green, and then I release. And now I've got a little symbol that looks kind of like what I showed in my wire diagram, which is a normally open contact with a question mark hooked to it. The question mark means I loaded the contact in my ladder, but I haven't told the system yet how I want to hook that contact up, what it's linked to. So the next thing I want to do in this very basic circuit is drag in a light bulb output. And next to my other things. The first thing I come to is something called output energize. <clears throat> That's a generic output that I can hook to anything. So I'm going to drag it down and just drop it to the right uh, of my normally open contact. And it didn't pop up next to it. It popped up all the way over to the right, also with a question mark. So this is it. I'm done with my programming. I've added my 
very basic ladder circuit. But I still need to hook this circuit up to something. So in the simulation world, I can actually pull up a table of my available inputs and outputs. So let's go to my simulation, which gives me just a table of all my inputs and outputs, things I might want to hook those normally open contacts to and my output to. So I'm going to click on IO simulator. And now we're going to drag this over to the right a little bit so I can see all of my IO simulators. And there are all the things that I can hook up this real world to. The first column, it says I colon one. That is my inputs available. And you see these little symbols next to it? Those are push button symbols. So these are all simulating push buttons that then bomb below. These are switch symbols, right? So for some reason, by default, it gives me switches and push buttons. I'm not sure how your software is going to come up by default. But I can change this. If I right click, it cycles through a variety of symbols. So I cycle through it and I can change it. Can you guys see that OK? If I right I click yep. on the actual symbol, I cycle through what it actually does. So I'm going to use I colon one zero zero. That's the first symbol in that first row, OK? As my input, this can be a push button input. Right next to it is my column of outputs. O colon two, zero, 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 one, zero, three. See, these are all 16 separate outputs. And if I right click on them, I can say what color it is. I want to make this a red output. So this is where I need to link my logic, which is over here in my ladder, to my I.O. And the way I do that, I can do it a couple of different ways. The easiest way is I can drag the I.O. and drop it into my logic. Did you see how I did that? Edit. Let's, uh, here, I'll do it again. You're going to click on the I.O. See, it pops up. O colon two slash zero. You're going to drag that. I'm going to drag it all the way over on top of my logic. And now I've added those addresses. And that's a very important term, I.O. address to my ladder logic. Is there an undo button? Sorry? Is there an undo button? Um, that's a good question. Edit does not have undo, I don't think. No, no undo. If there is, I never found it. Now, they're always goofing around with the software, so it could be added it for your version. I've got an older version. But let's, uh, let's delete these and start over again. This time, I'll show you a different way of adding it. So we're going to add that normally open contact, and then we're going to add that output. And this time, we're going to click into the symbol. And now we can type in the IO. So be I colon one slash zero. What do those symbols mean? I means input colon one. That means slot one. And we're going to get into what slot means. But in PLCs, generally, you can have multiple slots where you can add inputs or outputs um, in the simplistic PLCs that we're going to be using in class, the MicroLogic 1000, they've got generic slots, even if they aren't physically using a rack, 
with slots, it's just called a slot for where they've installed the IO internally. But each IO grouping has got a slot number. In this case, we've got three slots. First one's inputs, the second one's outputs, the third and fourth, third one's inputs, and the fourth one's outputs. Then we hit enter. Now we've got an IO. We also can add the same thing here, it would be O colon two slash zero. So that's outputs in rack position number two slash uh, IO position zero. And they usually, they usually start with one, they start with zero for some reason in the Allen Bradley world and many PLCs are same. They start with zero. So the first input or the first output is always input and output zero. And now we've added that IO. How'd you get the screen on the left to pull up again? Um, this screen, it's usually hidden like this. We can drag it to the right. If you close it, it's under simulations. So you go to simulation and again uh, it's right there you might need to close the the file structure if you click on simulations come up. Simulations, IO simulator. I'm not sure I like the sound, but that's what they give you. So you're able to pull it back up? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, so we're done with the programming. If you followed me along this far, you've done your basic programming. It is beautiful, it's done, it's wonderful. Um, Let's 